feet, your, your knees could sink a little bit lower. And I'm assuming that nobody did a warm up this morning or exercise. So we're all a little cold and our hamstrings are tight. So we're gonna warm up a little. But first I just wanted to talk a little bit cause you know that I like to impart a little bit of yoga wisdom. So I wanna just talk about kindness today. So we know it doesn't feel good to be on the receiving end of an unkind act. Um, and we also know that it, I, I think it's a universal uh, feeling that when you're unkind, it's also not great to be on the, on, the, um, on the action of doing an unkindness. I know that for one, I'm the kind of person who I remember every time I was really unkind and I think about it at night and I, you know, it bothers me and I tend to then reach back and, and apologize because it, I can't live with myself like that. So it really doesn't feel good in either case. Um, when my kids were growing up, when it came to kindness, I always taught them that kindness was the most important thing to be in life, being kind. And um, my 32 year old son, when he was 10, he went to school, I think it was like fifth grade and the teacher asked the question of the class, what's the most important thing to be? And he raised his hand like, oh, I know the answer, I know the answer. And he said, kind. And one of my proudest moments as a parent, but the teacher told him he was wrong. So I called him last night because I knew I was gonna tell the story. And I said, what was it that the teacher said was the most important thing? And he doesn't remember, but he does remember the story. And I don't remember either. It might've been curious or something else that's wonderful to be, but he was really sure and set that he was right. And it was kindness. So today I want to talk, you know, the theme is kindness on our mat. And I want you to start by being kind to yourself. So let's bring it to the mat. In yoga, kindness to yourself might be defined as modifying a pose and being kind to your body. We can't all, you know, I'm in um, more yoga teacher training to become a 500 hour. And my whole module this past week was about how all of our bodies are so different. And some people have longer legs and some people have longer torsos or longer arms. So if you see someone who can go into a headstand, it's that their anatomy might be different than yours. Just be kind to yourself. We're not all pretzels. And um, I was saying to someone earlier, I still have a problem with balance. And so it's so important that we keep practicing balance and we don't back off on something that doesn't work for our bodies or isn't comfortable. But at the same time, if you're feeling any pain or discomfort, back off, modify, be kind to yourself. So, um, you're, and keep your thoughts gentle and kind. Don't beat yourself up. Don't look and say, you know, I don't know if you can see each other. I really, I'm so far from you that I can't see the little boxes. But if you see someone else that can do something, don't, don't compare yourself. Be kind to yourself in your own thoughts. So today for our breathing piece, we're gonna combine a kindness meditation along with the breath. So I'm not going to be teaching you a yoga breath. We're just gonna be taking deep inhales and exhales. So first, I just want you to align your body. So if you're sitting on a block, great. Just make sure that your rib cage is over your hips, shoulders over the rib cage. And it's so important that your head and kind to yourself, if your head is on straight, centered on your shoulders so that you're not carrying more weight if you're leaning forward or leaning back, the head becomes much heavier. So make sure you're physically in a good place, aligned properly. We're gonna take deep breaths through the nostril and out of the nostril, inhale and exhaling out of the nostril. And with each breath, as you inhale, the kindness meditation, or I think it's called the meta meditation or a loving kindness meditation, you're gonna to say to yourself, may you be happy, healthy, and at peace with the inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna be, we're gonna do this five times. The, with the first breath, it's about sending that message to yourself. With the second breath, I want you to think now who it's gonna be. It's to a friend or a family member, a loved one. The third breath, the exhale, may you be, the inhale is may you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And you're gonna be thinking about an acquaintance. And the fourth breath, may you be happy, healthy, and at peace. Here's the hardest one for me. You're gonna be thinking about a person who 
let's just say you're in disagreement with or you don't really like. And the fifth one is you're gonna be sending that message out to the world. So hands on your knees, you can have your palms up so that you're in a yoga mudra of, which is a hand movement of receiving and gratitude. We breathe in through the nostril, deep breath, about four seconds long. May you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And as you exhale again, four seconds long, think of yourself, send that message to yourself. Inhale again, may you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And as you exhale, think of a friend, a family member, or a loved one. Inhale deeply, may you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And picture an acquaintance, someone that you barely know. Inhale again, may you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And now, as you exhale, think about someone that maybe you don't like too much or you're in a disagreement with and send that person this loving kindness meditation. Last one, inhale, count of four, three, two, one. May you be happy, healthy, and at peace. And as you exhale, picture the world. The world really needs our kindness. Hands to heart center. Send that to yourself, a little kindness once again. And as we begin to start our warm up, we can take away the block. Pick, sink your sit bones into the mat. Take your knees. Now we've been sitting in one place for a little while and recross them in the other direction. We always have to be even in yoga and we forget when we sit to do that. We're gonna move the spine in the seven directions of the spine. I'm not sure why I'm wearing glasses. I can't see you anyway. So the first one is inhale, bring your arms up, touch the sky, look up at the hands and find a little length in your spine. See if you can create a half an inch in, that, in, your, in your height right now as you send a little fluff into the spine and get really tall. Exhale, bring those arms down. Bring them in front of you and with tented fingers, bend at the hip crease, not at the waist. Bend at the hip crease, try to keep your back very straight into a forward bend and then allow your hands to come to palms. And if you would like, let yourself sink into a forward bend and you can allow your, your back to bend and to round as we're in a forward bend. Deep breath, always in through the nostril and out through the nostril. On the next inhale, bring yourself back up to an aligned position. Take your hands behind you, fingers reaching back behind you, away from your body, and lean, bring your hands back, just the way we crawled our hands to, with tented fingers in front of us, we're doing that behind us as we lean back at the hip center and then look up at the sky, take the shoulders, bring them back, and look up for a back bend. Come back to center, right hand on the floor, left hand, if it's comfortable for you to raise your arm over your head towards you by your ear, that's fine, that would be great. If not, you can hold your hand on your hip, you can hold your hand at heart center, whatever's comfortable, but we're bending at the weight, at the, well, at the waist, yes, on the right hand, so towards the right. The compression is on the right side, the stretch is on the left. Make sure that you're not leaning forward. You might wanna take that left hand, hold your rib cage and open up the heart. Open up the heart. Here we go again with kindness, leaning towards the right. Deep breath in. Now on the, on the inhale, see if you can get strong and taller and then bend. And on the exhale, relax into the bend. Always in yoga, when we're inhaling, we're getting strong and gathering length in our spine. And as we exhale, we're relaxing. Yoga is about strength and relaxation or strength and sweetness. Switch hands, the left hand comes to your side, the right hand comes overhead. And before you start leaning, inhale, get tall, exhale, bend over to the left. 
your gaze is straight ahead. So in yoga, a gaze is called your drishti and your drishti is straight ahead. So we say seven movements of the spine. We've just done five. Bring that hand down, come to neutral. Take your right hand, bring it behind you, smack in the center of your body. Your left hand is on your right knee. Before you start to twist, because I know you know this movement, inhale through the nostril and get tall, get strong. And as you exhale, that's when you turn over your right shoulder into a twist. When you twist, you're massaging those inner organs. It's really the only exercise that you're twisting in. With every inhale, see if you can gain some length and strength. And with every exhale, see if you can relax a little to go a little deeper into the pose. Take a couple breaths here. So do another one. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, relax into the twist. Now gently take that right hand and bring it to the left leg. Take the left hand and bring it right, right in the middle of your back behind you. Again, inhale, get tall, exhale, relax. And you're gonna notice a different difference in the two sides and your ability to twist and that's fine. Inhale, get tall, exhale, release into the twist. One more time, inhale, get tall and strong and exhale. See if you can twist a little further. You're all, not only are you different on each side, you're different every day. It depends what you did before, what time of day it is, what exercise you did, cross your hands in front of you, bring them at heart center, take a moment, let your body integrate and get realigned. And let's come to all fours to table. So your knees are underneath your hips. So there's about a fist between them. Your wrists are under your shoulders. Your fingers are spread wide. Now spread your fingers wide, as wide as you can. Your thumb is out there. Now bring your thumb about a half inch to an inch closer to your hands. We don't wanna spread the thumb joint as far out. Right now, I want you to take some, um, some, twer some turns, some circles over the wrist to give your wrist a little bit of movement here. And whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't matter, but when you get to the front after a few turns, go in the opposite direction. The warm up in yoga is probably the most important part. It's a very long part of our yoga class, but it's also really important. So we're gonna cat cow right now. So as you inhale, sink your belly towards the mat and raise the tailbone to the sky. And this is cow. So your, your backbone is actually you're, um, forming like a U and your chin comes, <laughs> comes up. <laughs> your gaze is up towards the, towards the middle of the wall. Like what, what you can see, your chin is up as you inhale and as you exhale, you bring your navel to the spine, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, and you do that with the breath. Inhale, belly comes down, exhale, navel comes up towards the spine. You do that a few times, you're warming up the spine for our movements. We're gonna be doing a lot of balancing today. I think I was, inspired to do a balance class when I decided that the theme would be kindness. And I was walking yesterday and I watched a woman trip on the sidewalk and I said, oh, we need to, we need to fight that. Okay, come to neutral and take your right leg, bring it back behind you, flex the foot and then bring it up hip height. Take the left hand, bring it out by your ear in front of you. You are actually balancing right now on your palm of your hand and your left knee. You might start shaking. This is a, this is a balance pose. It's strengthening. Focus on the core. It's a core movement. You're getting your core strong and you're balancing. Bring the hand back down, bring the knee back down. Take a moment, let your body integrate and then take the left leg back behind you, flex the foot. Bring the leg up to hip height and take the right arm out in front of you. Breathe, focus on the core. Let the right hand come back down under the shoulder. Bring the left knee, take, curl the toes under and we're gonna come up into crouching 
a crouching position. Bring your knees up, focus on the core. Hold this, let's hold this for a few breaths here. Inhale, exhale. Hold it for three breaths. And relax the knees back down to the mat. Uncurl the toes, leave your tailbone in the sky and take your hands out in front of you into puppy pose. So you allow your forehead to come down to the floor. The tailbone is up to the sky. This is a puppy pose, which is kind of like child pose, except that you are, it's kind of like down, between down dog and child's pose. You're stretching out your shoulders, your arms. Okay, lift the head, bring the hands back under. If you have blocks handy, bring them up to the front of your mat, both of them. We're gonna come into a child's pose. So in child, separate your knees. Your heels are under your buttocks. Put your hands up on the blocks in front of you and come down, bring your belly down towards the floor, your head onto the mat and your hands are up. This is really working those shoulders, believe it or not. So um, here's a pose where without the blocks, if at any point the practice gets to be too much for you, you can come into child's pose. Take a, take a breath here. Now, yoga blocks have three levels. So we're on a low level right now. Move those blocks to a medium level. And then come back down into child's pose. Lift the head, come back up. And let's come to the front of the mat. Stand up. Come to Tadasana. So in Tadasana, your feet are about a fist distance apart. Your toes are spread wide. Your stacked knees on top of ankles, hips on top of knees, rib cage on top of hips, shoulders down away from the ears and head is center. Your hands are out by your side. Now here in yoga, we're always talking about strength and relaxation at the same time. So you're stacked properly. If you lift your toes, you can actually feel the quadriceps, the knees lift and the quads engage, bring the toes back down, hands are down by your sides. And I love to talk about your arms and getting exercise, isometric exercise in your arms while we're doing yoga. If you have your arms down by your side and they just relax, that's fine. That's still Tadasana. But if you, if you can put a little bit of energy line as if there's a lightning rod coming up your arms across your shoulders and down the other side, you're actually working out your arms at the same time. So I want you to sway and come over your feet and then back towards your heels, sway side to side, find the center of your foot. So you find a place where you're pressing down on the ball of the big toe, the pinky toe side of the foot and both sides of the heel. See if you can lift the arch at the same time. I would like to say this, I'll just take 10 seconds to say this, lift up all the toes. This is a mind body exercise and I'm gonna work on this with you every week. Place the big toe down, place the pinky toe down and leave the other three toes up. You will be able to do this over time. Place the other three toes down. At the end of class, tell me if you're getting closer. Okay, we're into Dasana, we're gonna do some sun salutations. So arms are at our sides, strong and tall. We're gonna inhale, bring the arms up to the sky. Look up at your hands, slight, back bend, we're not really warmed up yet, so it's really slight at this point. Exhale, bring the arms down and forward bend. So you're bending at the hip crease, not at the waist. Bend your knees. Our hamstrings are not warmed up yet. You're allowed to rest your stomach onto your thighs and keep your knees bent. You're better off bending your knees than hyperextending. Inhale, come up halfway with a flat back. With a flat back means you're gonna take your shoulders and bring them back away from the floor so that you can have no, you know, so that your back is flat and it's not rounded. Exhale, come back down, hands on either side of the feet and step back into a plank position. Let's hold the plank for a moment. So a couple of breaths here, inhale, exhale, inhale again, exhale, 
If you'd like to come down with knees, bringing your knees to the floor, that's fine. Otherwise, take your toes, lean forward because you wanna have a 90 degree bend in the elbows and bring yourself down, push up, uncurl the toes, take your elbows, bring them close to the body and gently look up. We're in a baby cobra now because we're starting out. So look where the floor meets the wall. If, if you could let go, you're not pressing your hands into the floor for a baby cobra. It's almost like you can hover them over. It's really a very gentle back bend. Release and come down, curl the toes under and lift the tailbone to the sky for down dog. Deep breath. See if you can pedal the feet to try to reach the heels to the floor. Again, you can keep those knees bent. Walk your feet to the hands. Inhale, bring the hands up to the knees. And again, flat back, bring the shoulders back. Your gaze is at the floor. I was looking at you. <laughs> Exhale, bring the hands back down. And as you inhale, reverse swan dive the hands up to the sky. And this time, maybe you could do a little bit more of a back bend. Doesn't have to be a tremendous back bend, just lean back just a little and exhale, bring the hands back to the sides. We're gonna do that one more time. So inhale, hands touch, look up at the sky, a little bit of a back bend. Exhale, bring the arms down. Inhale, come up halfway, shoulders back. Exhale down to the floor and take your feet back into a plank position. Now you can bring your knees down if you'd like, otherwise lean forward and bring yourself to push up for chaturanga. Uncurl the toes, bring the elbows close to the body. And now we can go a little bit more into maybe a full cobra. So you're gonna be pushing with your hands and bringing your chest up off the mat. Your thighs are still on the mat. You're looking pretty much mid wall in front of you. Hold this for a couple of breaths. This is arm work. This is a back bend. Curl the toes under, bring the tailbone to the sky for down dog. Take a deep breath in through the nostril, out through the nostril, and walk your feet to your hands. Inhale, hands to your knees, take your shoulders back for a flat back. Exhale, come down and inhale, Reverse swan dive the hands up to the sky, look at the sky and give yourself a little bit of a back bend here and bring your hands down to Tadasana. We'll do one sun salutation B. So as we inhale, you're bringing your hands, they're not touching, they come wide and you sink, you bend your knees and you sink as if you're sinking into a chair, come to the side. So you're rooting and rising. Our hips are sinking as if we're in a chair and our torso is lifting towards the sky. Our feet are pressing into the earth. A couple of things to notice. See where your knee is in relation to your feet. You're gonna hold this. This is a strengthening position. You want your knees to be sort of facing the second toe. You want those knees to be straight over the feet and you wanna be able to see your toes beyond your knees as you look down. Bring your tailbone to the sky as you exhale and come into a forward bend. Your knees are still bent. It's a protection for your legs. Inhale, come up to flat back. So bring those shoulders back for a flat back. Your drishti or your gaze is looking at the floor. Exhale, come back down. I have to turn this way. <laughs> Hands on the outside of the feet and come into plank position. Inhale, come down, push up uncurl the feet, and now we're gonna come into up dog. So you're on four, you can, you can do baby cobra, if, do, what, do what you do, but if you'd like to join me in up dog, I am on the fronts of my feet and my two hands. Everything else is lifted. My gaze is up where the wall and the ceiling meet. Curl the toes under, come into down dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up, Exhale, bring the right leg through. Now you might have to help it, there's no judgment. Bring it to the inside of the right wrist. Turn, before you come up, turn that back foot into a 45 degree angle for stability and come up into warrior one. Warrior one is just your hands up over your ears. The front leg is bent, watch the knee that it's over the second toe. Your hips are pointed 
you know what, it's impossible. The, the, the proper placement of your hips is towards the front of the mat, but we don't wanna torque the back leg. So towards the front of the mat doesn't have to be exactly like two headlights. Bring the hands down on either side of the front foot, come to plank, exhale, chaturanga. Again, up dog. So now you're lifting on four points. Your gaze is up. Your hips are off, your knees are off. Only four, the, the two tops of your feet and your hands are pressed into the mat. Curl the toes under, down dog. Lift the left leg up and bring it through. It might take a little bit, it might take a couple of steps. Turn that back foot to a 45 degree angle. Come up into warrior one on the left. Hands down on either side. Again, plank, again, push up, and again, up dog. Curl the toes under, and we're in down dog, and we're gonna rest here for three breaths. So take three inhales and three exhales, and then meet me in bring your, by walking your feet to your hands in a forward bend. Walk your feet to your hands. Forward bend, your knees could still be bent. Relax your head, say yes, say no. Make sure the head is relaxed. Inhale, come to flat back. Exhale, come back down. And now as we inhale, we're coming back to a chair position. So the hands come back where we started. Your hips are sinking into a chair as your torso is raised. And come into Tadasana. That was just the warm up. <laughs> now we get to flow. If you want to take a, a drink of water, take a drink of water. I think I need one. It's rather hot here. Okay. I don't know whether to do a side view for you. Let's see. Have your blocks ready. We're going to need them. So we're in Tadasana. Again, make sure on all four parts of the foot, spread the toes wide hands with some energy down your, by your side. Hands come up, look up at the sky, slight back bend. Exhale, come down. Inhale, we'll first come down plank and then push up. Inhale into up dog. Exhale, come into down dog. Lift the right leg up in the air. Now take the left foot and bring it to the tippy toe. This is tail of the dog and then place the heel back down and bring the right foot through. Your toes are pointed straight ahead. So we're coming up into high lunge. So high lunge, now your hip points can face the front of the mat a little bit more easily because that back foot is facing forward. Your toes are faced in the same direction. We're gonna take our hands and clasp them behind us. So you're bringing your shoulders back when you do that. Make sure your knee is over the second toe and come into humble warrior, which is allowing your, your chest and your stomach, oops, to come down in, inside the front of the right leg. This is balancing and strength and shoulder work. Come back up, release the hands, bring them to heart center. Now take your left elbow and bring it over the, the knee of the right foot as you twist into a prayer twist. I don't think you can see me. <laughs> I'm twisting into a prayer twist. Come back up, take your hands, clasp them behind your head and cradle the back of your head as you open up the elbows and lean back into a back bend. Sink down in the front leg, make sure that knee is over the foot. It should actually feel good. I wish I could see you. Bring your hands to prayer. Have a block handy in case you need it, you might not. So your hands are in prayer, your front leg pressed down into the front leg. You're about to go into a balance pose. You might wanna hop that back leg as we lift it. Keep that front leg bent 
and come into warrior three. So you're bending over that front leg, your torso is long, your foot is stable and strong, your front foot, <laughs> your front foot is planted as you lift that back leg and, your, and balance over the front. Now, it helps if you have a hard time balancing and you wanna come to a wall. You can come to a wall or you can just make believe you're at a wall. If you can put that foot in a wall, you're not putting pressure on it. It's actually psychological for the balancing, but it helps you get into balance. When you are ready to come out of that, bring your feet together into Tadasana. Okay. We have to do the other side, guys. So inhale, touch the sky, lean back. Exhale, hands come down, forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, come to plank and chaturanga, which is a push-up. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. This time we're lifting the left leg. Lift the left leg, bring the right foot up on, your on the ball of your foot, on your toes for tail of the dog. Bring that foot down to your heel and slide that left foot through. Toes are pointed in the same direction. You're gonna come up. The front leg is bent, the knee is over the second toe. Your hands get clasped behind you as we lean down. So let your torso get strong before you lean and you're gonna bend at the hip crease. So your torso is long, your bottom, le your legs are planted as you raise the clasp and come into humble warrior. Come back up, take your hands into prayer Get strong and tall. Now, if, the, if it's harder for you, you could bring your legs closer together and then you're gonna take that right elbow, twist it over the left leg and come into prayer twist. Come back up, hands are at heart center. Clasp your hands behind your head. This is a relaxing position. Hold your head, cradle your head, open your arms, lean back into a back bend. The front leg is bent 90 degrees over, over the, you know, over the, in a 90 degree angle, over, the knee is over the ankle and the knee is pointed over the second toe. Bring your hands to prayer. We're about to go into warrior three. So the reason I want you to have the blocks, if you wanna take your hands down onto blocks, that's fine too, keep them on the high level. You can try it with prayer hands. Now make believe there's a wall behind you and each leg is different. So you might be better on this leg, but if you need the blocks, you can let go of the prayer hands and just hold on to the blocks. Blocks are wisdom, not weakness. As our bodies age, we need a little help. Bring that foot down, let it meet the other one. Come back up and we're in Tadasana. We still have more flowing to do. Keep the blocks handy, you will need them. If at any point you wanna take a rest, water rest, child's pose rest, just meet us where we are. We're in Tadasana. Bring your hands up to the sky. Come back down on either side of the feet and just step into down dog. Bring the right foot up in the air. Bend the right foot and bring it so that the hips, the right hip is stacked over the left foot, open hip, bring it back to center and then slide it through. Place the left foot down, the left knee down. You're in a low lunge. Bring the blocks near you. We're gonna lean back into a runner stretch. Foot is flexed and then come and give yourself a hip stretch here. So you wanna lean forward into a hip stretch. Again, inhale and come into runner stretch and exhale into a hip stretch, low lunge. One more time, inhale, runner stretch, exhale, hip stretch, 
Now, take the blocks, bring them to the inside. You may need blocks, you may not, you may need them at any level, but you can place them very easily on the inside on a low level to start to see if that's okay for you and bring your forearms down as you take that knee that's now next to your shoulder and turn it towards the pinky toe side of the foot. Give your hip a nice little hip stretch right here and then bring it back so that it's hugging your shoulder and we're in lizard. Take a breath here. Come back up, remove the blocks. Hands on either side of the foot. Take the back foot, curl it under, lift the knee, bring the foot to its parallel to the side of the mat so your feet are at a, 90, at a perpendicular angle with each other as you come up into warrior two. So warrior two, your front leg is over the second toe of the front foot. It's in a 90 degree angle or as close as you can be. The back foot is straight and facing like it's parallel to the front of the mat. So they're in two different directions. They're 90 degrees from each other. If the two legs came together, they would be the, the heel of the front foot would meet the arch of the back foot. Your hands are over. On one is facing front into the future, the back, hand, the back arm is facing back in the past and you are in the present. So make sure that your torso is over your hips and you're really centered here. Your gaze, while the front of your chest is wide and your heart is open and you're kind to yourself, you are also gazing over the front fingers. Make sure, keep checking yourself. I just noticed my knee started to turn in. So check your knee. The thing about yoga poses, the more advanced you are, it's the same poses as beginners. They just, you can deepen the poses. You check the poses. You're constantly checking your body. Take a deep breath here. This is really, it's a warrior two pose and it is a strengthening pose. Great for the quadriceps. Take your left hand, let it slide down the back of the leg as your right hand comes over into peaceful warrior. You might wanna take that right hand, make sure your rib cage is open, your heart is open as you come over. So you're not leaning forward or down or back. Take the front forearm, rest it on the front thigh as your left arm comes over the ear for side angle pose. Take a deep breath. Come back to warrior two. So you wheelhouse that back arm. You're in warrior two. Straighten the front leg. And we're gonna tip down into triangle pose. So the front arm, the palm is facing out forward. If you need a block here, you can take a block. We're gonna need blocks in a, in a moment. So keep them handy. So in triangle, picture yourself as if you were leaning against a wall. You definitely want an open heart and open chest here, but you also don't wanna be leaning forward. You want one plane, one line. Now, here's where you wanna set yourself up mentally for what we're about to do next. Notice where your blocks are. You're gonna need one. Take the block, put it on its highest level. Leave your hands where they are, your arms. You're gonna take that back leg and hop it closest to the front. Place, your, place all your balance into that front leg. Put all your weight onto that. Take the hand and place the block under your face. So where your head would be so that your wrist is under your shoulder. Your back leg is in the air, even with your hip and your front arm is up. You are in half moon. This is really a balance pose. And unlike warrior three that we were in where your chest is facing the floor, now you are open and your hips are open. Your chest is open and we're holding this and breathing. And then gently bring that leg down back where it was. Turn both toes so they're facing the side of the mat and you're in wide angle pose. Bend, put your hands on your hips, bend at the hip crease. So feel where your thighs meet your hips, bend at the hip crease, have a flat back, bring the shoulders back, bring the block so that it's under your face, left hand on the block, right hand up in the air. Switch sides.
remove the block, let your hands come down to the floor and we're doing a bend, a forward bend over wide angle legs. Shift your weight to the right leg. See if you can tap your nose to your knee. Bring your hands to the left leg. And again, see if you can tap your nose to your knee. Come center, heel toe your feet together. Allow your head to relax and gently roll up very slowly, shoulders back. We have to do the other side. <laughs> so come to Tadasana at the front of the mat. Hands up, touch the sky. Exhale, hands down on either side of the floor. Step back into down dog. Lift the left leg in the air. Bend the left leg and turn so the hip is open. You have the left leg, left hip stacked, stacked on top of the right hip. Your hips are open. This is to practice because we're going into open hip, right? For the, for the half moon position that we just did on the right. So we have to get that hip used to being open. Bring that left leg forward and bring it to the inside of the left hand. Turn the back foot so it's, so it's perpendicular to the front foot and come up wheelhouse the back arm and come into warrior two. So just check your knee, that your knee is over your second toe. You're in a 90 degree angle. Make sure your torso is centered as if there's, you're leaning against a wall. Back foot is straight, not hyperextended, but straight. Actually, we forgot to, I forgot to do low lunge with you. We'll go back and make sure we get that in there. We're just gonna do the warrior two. So slide your right arm down your leg and come into peaceful and exhale. Bring your forearm to the front leg and come into side angle pose. Keep checking that knee that it's over the second toe. Come back wheelhouse that arm around, come into warrior two. Check your alignment, look over the front hand, open heart, kindness, straighten the front leg, tip down into triangle. Keep that block handy, you know where we're going. So stay in triangle for a moment. Feel the alignment of the body. And before we move, grab, notice where your block is so you can grab it. Shift the weight into the front leg as you hop the back leg forward so that you lift it and the front hand comes down onto the high level of the block. Your hips are stacked, your hips are open, your chest is wide. Your heart is open and we're in a balance pose, half moon. Flex the back foot. Picture a wall behind you that you're pushing against, but the oh, you're leaning really on that, all the weight is on that leg. Some weight is on your arm, but really the weight is on your leg. Hold that for a couple of breaths. And then gently place the leg down. We'll come back into warrior two because now I have to take you where I missed. <laughs> so turn the back toes forward to the front of the room. Place the right leg, the knee down on the floor. Take the two blocks. Let's do a little bit of stretching on that front leg. Lean forward for a hip stretch. Lean back, flex the foot for runner stretch. Forward for hip stretch back for runner stretch, forward, back. Bring your foot to the floor, bent knee, turn, turn the back toes under, lift the leg, come turn the feet so that they're facing the side of the mat and we are in wide legged pose. Heel toe the feet together so that the heels are facing in and the toes are out so we can come into Malasana, yogi squat. Another functional pose that's really important as we get older to be able to get up and down and into a squat. Children sit this way until they sit in chairs. Yogi squat is really, there are people who as a functional exercise sit like this for 15 minutes a day. Try it when you're watching TV. Okay, very gently. We're not getting up from here. We're gonna take our hands behind us and gently 
put our hips down on the floor, our sit bones, and we're in a seated position. Plant the left foot down, the sole of the foot down, knee is bent. Take your hands behind you, lean back, bring the right ankle over the left knee, and slow, raise, make, as you inhale, get tall and strong. And as you exhale, see if you can lean towards the bent leg. This is a seated pigeon position. Hold that, take a few breaths here. Plant the, foot, the sole of the right foot down. Take a deep breath, inhale through the nose, exhale. And then take the left ankle and place it over the right leg. Take a deep breath in, get tall and long. And as you exhale, see if you can bring your body a little bit closer to the bent leg. Hopefully you can feel that stretch. Place the feet on the floor and gently come down into a reclined position. So if you have a block handy, great. We're gonna come into bridge and you're gonna place the block on the medium height under your hips, under your, like where your sacrum is. So the block is under here. Your feet are planted on the floor. I want you to focus on keeping the legs together, not splaying them out, not letting the hips or the knees come out. The idea is to keep them together, not pressing together, but just um, mentally make sure that your thighs are pushed or are, are turned inward. Your hands are on your sides. You're gonna take the right leg and bring it up to the sky. Flex the foot. By the way, we're in an inversion right now. Your heart is below your body. Bring the right foot down, bring the left foot up. Flex the foot, bring the left foot down. Now, if you'd like to try to take that block to the highest level, you're really going into a higher inversion. If not, and you wanna leave it on the lower, that's okay, we're just doing that same movement again. So take the right foot up in the sky, flex the foot. Bring the right foot down. This is also a back bend, bring the left foot up. Flex the foot. Release. Release the block from behind you. Bring your knees, hug your knees to your chest, keeping the tailbone down. So you wanna, it's, you're lengthening the spine at the same time. And then let your feet come up towards the ceiling as you grab the outside of your feet and take the knees into your underarm area for happy baby, which is an upside down malasana or yogi squat. With the ceiling met us, we'd be in a squat. We'd be in a forward bend squat, but we'd be in a squat. Press those knees into the underarm cavity. Release the feet to the sky. Put your hands down and release the legs to the floor all the way down as we go into Shavasana. So here's where you let your legs splay out. You're, you really want to be a tension hunter. So, um, I'll leave you with a little bit of silence, but before we do that, go through your body as we lie here and find some tension. There's bound to be tension somewhere. It's hard for us to relax. You want your body to take the time in Shavasana to integrate everything we just did. We moved around a lot. Work your way up from your feet, to your ankles, your knees, your hips, through your back, and find some tension that you can release. And while we're here, I'll just leave you with the words that my yoga teacher used to say to us when we were in Shavasana, which always made me smile. Just remember that you are beauty, you are love, you are truth, you are light. And I'll add that you are kindness.
if you'd like to stay here. This is a really short shavasana, so I invite you to stay if you're comfortable doing so. If you'd like to come out because of timing and joining me on the mat, and to when you come into seated, start by wiggling your fingers and your toes, bringing some awakening. And when you're ready, turn over on your right side, cradling your head with your arm, and using your left hand to bring yourself up into a seated position. And meet me in an easy seat. You can bring your hands to heart center. And in yoga, we say namaste, which means the light in me sees the light in you. And I just wanna add that I'm so grateful and honored that you chose to spend the time with me this morning. So thank you and um, be kind and namaste. Thank you. <laughs>